The Real Show is brought to you by UCS Facility Management Limited, Omni Basic Bank and Dewdrop Hand Sanitizer. If you don't have the chance to stay by a TV throughout the session, do not worry because you can keep up on our Facebook Live, The Real Show page. And as you know, this is the show where we keep everything real. We have discussions with people who have um, established uh, various points in their journeys and in their careers, and they are here to have conversations to inspire you and I to the next level, and we make it fun. So don't go anywhere. Stay with me. I'll be introducing my first guest for the first segment of the show. I'll be back. Welcome back to The Real Show. If you just joined in, then you are right on time because we are about to kickstart the first segment of the show with an amazing woman of substance. She is an achiever in a field that is male-dominated. Let's have a look at her profile. International Women's Day celebration has as its theme, breaking the bias. A clarion call is being made to all concerned to stop the discrimination that women are facing in their lives and chosen fields. The Rue Show hopes to break the bias in computer technology. Grace Hopper, Catherine Johnson, and Maria Clowey are some few women who blazed a trail in computer technology. They have had to break the glass ceilings in the various fields to be able to attain this feat. They were leaders in building the early foundation of modern programming and unveiled the structure of DNA. Their work inspired environmental movements and led to the discovery of new genes. They also broke the sound barrier and gender barriers along the way. Yet, they have still not made any significant numbers in that field. A 2020 study by the AnitaB.org Institute found that women make up 28.8% of the tech workforce. In Ghana, the figures are very low. According to a survey done by Statista.com, only 1.4% of the women population have written a programming language. Shika Susan Bedema Agbesi is one of the few women in computer technology and breaking the digital bias. She is the advisor on information security at GIZ Ghana. She has over 12 years rich experience in information security, risk management, international development, e-banking and digital banking, fintech operations, fintech and payment compliance, IT operations, change management and lecturing. Before GIZ, Shika worked as IT operations and change management manager and compliance manager with a Ghanaian-owned fintech. She led a team of highly skilled IT professionals and third-party workforce to develop and deploy robust digital and virtual channel solutions across all regions in Ghana. Welcome Shika to the Real Show Studios. Welcome, 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 Shika. I love your dress. Thank you. Oh, and your earrings. I love everything. I love how you're looking tonight. Thank and you. And your smile is contagious. <laughs> We're blessed to have you on The Real Show. And just thinking about uh, why IT, though? Uh, it's, it's, I would say it's, a, it, it's, it's passion, um, determination, and persistence. Yeah. So you just... From the start, always knew you'd get into IT? Not really. So the decision was to become a medical doctor okay. while growing up, maybe because of the environment I, I grew up. I grew up in medical mm -hmm. village where nurses, doctors, and other paramedics were the, the people that were there. Mm -hmm. And I wanted <laughs> to become a medical doctor. Mm -hmm. However, I... I, I realized there was this challenge I couldn't overcome. That has to do with, uh, I'm a very light sleeper. So mm -hmm. my mom was um, a professional nurse that specialized in ear, nose, and throat. And um, they normally uh, call her on emergencies. Yeah. So anytime she's going to work at night, I end up not sleeping. Yeah. So 
I, I decided to look out for another option. option. <laughs> it made the whole IT. medical sector <laughs> un, unattractive for you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I just can't um, sleep after they come for her. Mm. I later developed a strategy of, let's say, taking her to the hospital. Again, I end up not sleeping, Aww. so it was a no-go area <laughs> for me. <laughs> but how, how did she take it when you made up your mind not to get into the medical sector? Okay, so she, she realized that was a challenge. So she, she was fine with it and decided to help me look for a better career that maybe I may fit in well. Okay, so let's look at your educational journey towards okay. becoming the manager that you are now. Okay. Where did you have to school? What did you have to study in case somebody's watching and the person wants to take the same path as you? Okay, so um, it all started in Maoli school. Um, okay. I read science. Then later on, after Maoli school, while awaiting um, results, mm. that was about three to four months, um, we were at home and my mom won't allow you to be watching movies <laughs> as usual. So <laughs> she, <laughs> she asked me to go and read a computer, a introduction to computer. Mm. So I went to a nearby school. And after a month, I was able to um, make use of the computer as well as um, the Microsoft Office suite. Mm. Then that's where it all started. So I was assisting my teacher then to train other students that were coming in. So after that, I, I, I wanted to pursue further. So I applied to the Kofi Annan ICT Center where I read a, a certificate course in um, FSD, Foundation in Software Development. Then after that, um, so it, ha it was moving so fast. Wow. Then um, there was another um, course that is Diploma in Business Computing. So I took up the challenge to, um, that has to do with programming, um, databases, work technologies, Oracle. Yeah. Um, that was Tenji then. So that's where <laughs> it, it, it started. <laughs> okay, then what does a compliance money to do? What do you do? Oh, it's. Uh, a compliance manager has to do with uh, protecting legal requirements of an organization as well as internal policies. So you develop internal policies and ensure that the control measures are met. And should there be um, a violation of it, the certain things that you have to do. And that to is ensure for IT? Yes. So there are control measures in IT? Yes. You know, you would think that since... Uh, information technology is basically internet-based now. Everybody mm -hmm. has the freedom to do what they want to do. And so can you tell us about something that as a layman we are supposed to be aware of because of our daily usage of the internet, technology, and so on and so forth that we may not even know? Okay, so an example is, let's say, in the corporate environment, you are supposed to define your passwords. Mm -hmm. So with your passwords, those are the basic way of protecting yourself in the cyberspace. So um, you, it's always advisable to mix alphanumeric as well as symbols. Okay. Then you do not share your passwords with any other person. These are the little basics to protect one from the, the uh, cyberspace. All right, so usually when we are entering passwords or choosing a password, we see those signs, but we don't take them into consideration because, I mean, if you're not telling anybody your password, then how will they get it? But I now understand that the mixing of the numbers and the symbols also helps to make it harder for someone to hack into it, yes. if I'm clear. Yes. Yes. And uh, are, there, are there some laws in the country concerning the use of information technology that could end you up in trouble if you don't know? Yes, yeah, so... Um Recently, um, if the date is right, back in, I think, October 2020, um, Ghana launched a cybersecurity act yeah. that has to do with protecting individuals in the cyberspace. Mm -hmm. An example has to do with uh, children, protecting them. So oh, you just when the don't... Polo issue came up? Yes, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. So it's all to ensure that there's a little hygiene at the mm -hmm. cyberspace. 
Nice. Now, looking at your journey in IT as a woman, you know, even before we look at gender as a country, a developing country, we are mm -hmm. not there yet, if I must say. We are trying, yeah. but we are not there yet if we are comparing ourselves to developed countries in terms of IT. Now, even at the position we find ourselves, it seems to be male-dominated. So how are you coping throughout your journey as a woman? Uh, okay, so I'll say my journey has been uh, successful okay. and positive, and I'll say it's been rewarding. Nice. It's been rewarding because um, I have a lot of friends in the space, so it's a male-dominated area, but mm -hmm. you have to make the guys your friends. Yeah. Once they have you as your friend, they, they are able to help you achieve yeah. where you want to. Yeah. In the tech space, it's only a few guys that I would say are bullies, but you just have to devise ways of having them, and, and they teach you mm -hmm. as well as um, you share ideas. Yeah, but would you say that, you know, usually um, people take the whole idea of getting into tech as a very boring sector. Would you dispute that fact? Ah, yeah. It's, it's not boring. It's an interesting space where you've been <laughs> stumped with guys. And mm -hmm. even when it comes to training in our schools, it's, it's just run the code, just debug <laughs> it, and just... Um, the guy should just be a little bit maybe delayed in uh, debugging or getting the code to run. You realize that you feel good and yes. you tease them and they give you funds. Yes. It's, it's, it's challenging <laughs> depending on how you play around with yeah. it. So it's not boring. Uh, it's an interesting space. Well, if you're watching, this is The Real Show, and we're having an amazing conversation about IT. So if you're a woman out there and you want to get into information technology, I'm here to tell you that from Madame Shika herself is an amazing field and it's very rewarding. And don't worry because it is not boring as well. And as you know, there are rules that govern the usage of the internet and, you know, the technological space as a whole. And Ghana has passed an act, and that is why uh, I think last year, was it last year? That's two years. That's two years. Polo had her issue. So let's enjoy IT, but let's stay safe. Now, on that note, what does FinTech do? FinTech is um, an, an acronym for financial technology. It's a fast-growing space because um, financial industries are now leveraging on information technology yeah. to improve their services yeah. to their customers. So we, we've gotten to a stage where we make use of lots of um, services, such as sitting at the comfort of your home and you are able to um, buy an airtime, purchase a data instead of going out there. Gone were those days that <laughs> we have to carry a lot of cash yeah. that makes a society or people to fear armed robbery was high. Mm -hmm. Due to financial technology, a lot of this has reduced. We used to queue those days, go to the <laughs> banking hall to receive yeah. remittance, but they just push On it to phone, you yeah. and you are able to push out mm -hmm. as well. So these are some of the, um, the, the, the benefits of FinTech. And we've got a um, lot of FinTechs in Ghana operating now, the likes yes. of PaySwitch, ZP, Express oh, Pay, they are doing absolutely well. Yeah just to ensure that people are safe as well as the society becomes a cash-like society. Well, are you sure that Ghanaians are ready for a paperless system? I think so. Especially <laughs> now, taking a look at the fact that the government wants to bring up the e-levy. Yes, yes. Don't you um, think that has an effect on how we would accept a paperless system? Already, I think it's hard for Ghanaians to be paperless. There are pros and cons okay. about this. Okay. But you and I have to sit down to see which one the works for one. you. If you think it's carrying the cash of, let's say, 5,000, 6,000 <laughs> in your bag and moving around in the likes of Makola, if that's it, you are okay with that. If you think you can afford maybe should the e levy be passed into a law and you think you can pay for it, 
best, best, best yes. way. Actually, I'm looking at the benefits of a paperless system. You know, okay. the security of cash, and like you're mentioning, is really good. But uh, is, is it enough to convince the Ghanaian? Because, you know, if you're looking at the ordinary Ghanaian, I mean, percentage-wise, how many of us have even gone beyond basic education? We still have issues with that. So educating someone to the point that... Educating Ghanaians to the point that everybody can read and write is, is something we should even look at before we expect that people will read their budget statements, even for educated people, degree holders, PhD holders. How many people even take their time to, you know, go through their email and have a look at their budget uh, statements given them at the end of the month? Unless there's an issue with the finance, uh, uh, the person's finances, maybe the person is trying to ex do extra management or there's some balance or figure he doesn't understand even that he may call his relationship manager and have a talk over the phone. So it's a good system if you look at the pros and cons, but how are we going to get the ordinary Ghanaian to accept it? So uh, it's with time. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a gradual process. Okay. Um, recently, you realize that digitization uh, has transformed a lot in Ghana. Yeah. So um, we will get there. <laughs> we will, we will All right, so tell us about cyber security. Okay. Cyber security has to do with safeguarding information at the cyber space, okay. or the internet space. And when we talk about cyber security, um, it, it has um, three features. So we, make, we refer to it as um, the CIA triad. So it's in a rectangular form. Um, so we have confidentiality, integrity, and availability. So information needs to be protected or safeguarded in a way that it, it should be confidential. Confidentiality yeah. has to do with protecting it from unauthorized disclosure. Then integrity has to do with it is, it's supposed to be what it is. There shouldn't be, um, so you are protecting it from um, modification. Yeah. So um, 3,000 doesn't change to 5,000. Mm -hmm. Once that happens, people begin to question the, the um, integrity of it. Then availability has to do is you protect it to be accessible. We've, we, we are in, in a space where you hear people talking about uh, the service is 99.99% available, available. So mm -hmm. you know if you, are, if you want to assess an ATM and there's a downtime, we all know how it affects us. Yeah. So yes, same way information is supposed to be available to an authorized person to assess it to, to work. So this, this is a little... I can talk about uh, <laughs> cyber security. All right, so then what measures would you actually advise organizations to take in order to protect their data? Okay, organization, I will say they need to um, classify their data. So when working, we have different type of data. Um, some data, um, some information, I'll say, are very critical to business processes. And if you make reference to the Data Protection Act of Ghana, it defines how we need to protect our data. There are some data that you always have to ensure that they are protected. Those are data that have personal identifiable information. So. It's, de it's defined in the um, Act, in Data Protection Act. Okay. So um, again, you classify them, um, maybe an example can be public. A, a data or an information that goes to the public space can be job adverts. So you are looking for uh, professionals to apply for that job to join the organization. That's some... Um, um, information that can also be referred to as internal. Internal has to do is it's um, shared with every staff of, of yeah, the, organization. the organization. And this can be maybe staff memos. So how does classifying your, your data help to protect it? 
Okay, I'll get there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, so if it's internal, it's it needs a little protection. Public doesn't need much protection because it will go to the uh, public space. However, in the process of working on a public inf information that goes into the public space, it needs to go to same way confidentiality until it is approved to go into the public space. Then, aside the internal, which has to do with internal memos, maybe management meetings, it also needs a little bit protection from the public space because it's not meant for the public, it's for internal <laughs> yes. use. Now, then we have um, restricted information. An example of a restricted information is, it's only certain people in the organization that can assess it. This can be the heads of department, maybe head of HR, head of finance, head of um, um, audit. They are the people that are able to assess this information. Then there's another example of classifying an information or data. This has to do with a, conf a confidential, confidential data. So if it's confidential, that means maybe it's limited to the top management of an organization. However, this information needs to be labeled. So when you are dealing with a, oh. a confidential information, you realize that it's confidential. You care so nobody else yes. looks. So when you go to our hospital, you realize that those days that we used to carry folder in the hospital, yeah, yeah. the nurse doesn't give you the folder. They carry, she holds, they, she holds it, and you follow up, and okay. they go to the doctor, hand it over to either the doctor or the consulting room nurse. It's your information that is not accessible to yes. you. That is an example oh, great, of great, confidentiality. Great, 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 great. Yes. So at least classifying it tells the person who holds the information how to also handle the information That's so that where there's no abuse protecting of it, it from. Yes and authorized access, access yes. then modification. Yes. Maybe the diagnosis is, let's say, malaria, but because Some somebody has access it. to it, the person changing is to cholera. Yeah. And just imagine the dispensary yeah. technician gives you a treatment for cholera. This is how <laughs> we, pre we protect information. Yes. But what about individuals? How do we protect ourselves as well? Is it through the same means? Um, in, okay, it it's also applies. Individuals in protecting information, one has to do with, uh, I'll go back to the passwords, then um, how you protect information. Information, in this day and age, we make good use of social media. So there are certain information you don't share at the social media space. Maybe should I mention my mom's name and my date of birth? Somebody can just quickly know that, oh, in your email, this is uh, an information that I can use to reset to your email. If I, maybe I talk about my first car that I bought, it's easy for you to use it to reset a password. Yes, so you have to be careful on what you share on social media. Aside that, in our working environment, it's always advisable to practice a clear desk as well as clear screen policy. Clear desk has to be do with, if you are working with hard copy documents, printed out documents, you always make sure they are in a file and lock in a lockable cabinet since it depends on the, the classification of information you are handling. Then again, if you are working with a PC, you always have to make sure you lock it okay. if you are not on your desk. That is by pressing the Windows key as well as control lock. It's make sure information is protected from an authorized viewing. Mm -hmm. Should I watch your date of birth? Should I go to the, the head of finance? That deals with the payroll of uh, oh Mercury TV and just look at your salary. <laughs> oh my gosh. I, don't, I mean, if, if it's an increment, then maybe it's not, it's not going to be a crime, is it's it? It's supposed to be confidential. <laughs> but yes, I, I get the point. Yes. You know, sometimes you watch movies and then sensitive information that could even bring down the downfall of a whole company is just picked off the laptop because somebody didn't close a window yes. and all that. Okay. Yes. Now, as a person, what drives you? What motivates you? 
what drives me and motivates is solving a problem. Nice. That joy of um, seeing it work. <laughs> that joy of starting a project from an idea stage to a reality is what drives me. Nice. Yes. But how do you, would you say as a woman combining your uh, job or work in the IT segment with uh, family is difficult? Um, where passion comes in, you don't see the difficulty because um, once it has to be done, you don't really mind. You, you, have to, <laughs> you have to ensure it's done. Mm -hmm. And you realize that it's not a burden for you yeah. because passion. Maybe should mm -hmm. it have been medicine, I would have seen it as a nuisance because somebody is coming to disturb my sleep and I'm not going to <laughs> enjoy <laughs> my So yeah. it's all about passion. Yes. Yes. But would you say that what you do as a person also affects your daily life decisions? Like maybe picking the kind of phone you'd, you'd want to buy or maybe the kind of problems people have with IT petty petty issues. Do, do those things affect you in such a way that you sort of bring work into your life? <laughs> <laughs> Once it's a profession, you always want it to be seen in what you do. Yeah. So um, it it's, has to do with maybe devices that you use. <laughs> so when it's one thing I can share with you is if I'm buying a device, I always make sure I buy the durable one. Maybe that will be expensive that I can use within a, a longer frame of time. Yeah. So I get used to it. But it's difficult for me to go and buy uh, something that is not durable, that you keep on replacing. So you always make sure you get the best. If it's a phone, that means if you are buying a, maybe for instance, it's 2,000 CDs or 3,000 CDs, <laughs> I calculate the, the, the a time frame that I'm going to use it. Maybe I'm going to use it for four or five years. So I know that, oh, it's worth it. Should I divide it by the number of years that I'm going to use wow, it? Wow, you are really it's into finance it. and tech because you're combining <laughs> it for me at this moment. Yes, yes. So um, in a way, it's, it's affected yeah. again. Yeah. I'm very careful about information I share on social media since I'm able to know that mm, this somebody can get hold of it and use it against you. Mm. So it's, it's, it's applies. Then again, at home, if I get home, I'm being careful about how I enter the, the, the house. I park at the gate, ensure the environment is very serene. I don't see people passing by before I even get out to open the gates. That's if no one is in to open for me. So it, it applies in every day <laughs> activity. Well, let's, let's take a look at the Ghanaian educational system. Okay. We know that um, early on it was mostly theoretical as in if I'm, it's safe to say about almost 90% of what we study is in the book. So okay. somebody knows what a mouse is by mouth, by word of yeah. mouth, because he's been told. But could be here in the room and you ask him to take the computer mouse and he wouldn't know what he's picking up. Yeah. And so I know that the government is working on it. I hear there are now um, um, educational uh, aspects that is just with a technical and um, IT segment. But you as a person and with your experience, even with work and your passion, what would you advise the government to, you know, inculcate into the educational system that will make us more tech savvy? Oh, that's, that's a good question. Thank you. So, um, with me, I was privileged to um, have training at the Ghana Kofi Annan ICT Center. Mm -hmm. So, in such an institution, um, theory is not all that you do. You combine theory with um, the practical. practical. There's no way you can learn um, maybe programming on paper. You have to code and debug and make sure it works. And that joy and the satisfaction of, of it working gives you that, that kind of assignment and fulfillment. So all I'll say is governments should ensure we have the likes of technical training. 
I know there's been a lot of work done in uh, a TVET, yes, um, in ed a TVET education. So these are the things that we need to make us an industrialized um, country instead of lots of the theories that goes on where when it comes to practicality, we, we are not able to. So they should invest more in um, technological as well as technical and vocational training. Yes, and now let's look at internet in Ghana. Internet availability in developed countries seems to be like a part of living. It's very accessible and the flow is continuous and, you know, well-regulated. But when it comes to Ghana, we always have issues, you know, fluctuating um, power may be a reason availability. why availability of power, electrical supply is probably yes. why. But then even despite that, I think it's safe to say we don't have a stable connection with internet. Why would you say it is so? It's, it's difficult to speak for them. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, 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 that's the internet service providers. Yes, yes. Yeah. So... Um, the best we can say is um, the telcos to invest into um, more um, infrastructure as well as more technologies that will ensure that there's a maximum uptime that has to do with availability as well as satisfaction to their clients. Because trust me, the population is growing every mm -hmm. day. The usage of mobile devices is increasing. Trust me, you and I sitting here, we <laughs> use more than three devices yeah. that are utilizing um, internet. internet. So yeah. they just have to make sure they improve the service for us too, as well as I'm passionate about those in the rural areas, areas as, well. as well. well. Even in the city we are complaining so well. We hope we get there yeah, and if you're watching this is a real show and we've been having an amazing conversation on IT like I said early on and Shika has taught us a lot and so let me just try and re-emphasize a few of them for personal use and these are the points. Okay the first one is that if you are using your laptop make sure that you clear the laptop before you get up or your personal computer and then you clear your desk so that information is not easily assessed by unauthorized people. Also, if, you're not on, if you are in an organization, it's actually important to classify information so as to deter people from, you know, stepping out of their boundaries and accessing information that shouldn't be available to them. We've learned a lot, you know, and I think we, it's safe to say that we should all be careful with what we post in, on the internet and even how we use it and also the kind of information that we leave out there that can be used against us. Now, we'll be back to continue this conversation. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to The Real Show. We are still here with Shika, and we are talking about data security. Now, we are going to open the phone lines for you to have the chance to call in give your contributions or questions across and we'll do our best to clarify them. Now the number is 055 0089 807. 055 0089807. The number should be on the screen so you can call in, you know, give your contributions if there's something you want us to clarify, is it an inquiry you want to make and then you can call in and put that across. Any messages you call the number on the screen and you get to join us live on The Real Show right here on Metro TV Ghana. So, Shika, we are going to give the audience a chance to call in, so we'll wait for them to call. But is there any other thing you'd like to add to our discussion as well? Yeah, uh, I would like to use this opportunity to call on parents to encourage their young ladies to pursue um, careers in uh, information technology. It's, uh, it's, it's rewarding and uh, it's a good field to, to be in. So just to call on them. To, you know, to I like that. the fact that you keep saying it's rewarding, it's rewarding, it's rewarding. It's really rewarding. She's mentioned that once <laughs> or twice already. So if you love IT and you're a woman, be bold. It is a system for you as well. Okay, we have a call on the line. Hello? 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 
Hello, good evening. Good evening. Your name and where you're calling from, please. My name is Felix, Felix Kofi Achu. Okay, Felix. Thanks for calling. Anything you have for us, please? Yes, I want to um, share, give an input to what she has said so far. Okay. All right. So um, one thing I, I was expecting she would mention is the need for uh, companies to have a policy where documents have to be shredded. Nice. Yes. You know, most company documents contain sensitive information. Yeah. And here lies the case. Most of the times we only, um, we fold them and we, we, we dump them in the dustbins. And what happened is that perpetrators usually upon getting to know where companies dump their refuse, they go in and they pick out those documents and get to study every information that is in there and they use it to fight the companies. <laughs> so it is always good to have a shredder machine in the company. Thank you so much for the contribution, Felix. Yes. Yes. I Thank think we, we see that in movies, people shredding. They have, some even have a shredding machine where they put yes. all papers back and shred. Yes. So um, it's, it's always good for organization. As Felix said, I actually know him. Oh, um, nice. To, to <laughs> always have shredders in vital areas you know, in the organization so that people can shred far as well. Then when disposing of electronic devices to the uh, shredders um, that you use to shred information before discarding them so that yes. after discarding these devices, okay. nobody goes in there to pick some yeah. <laughs> information. All right, to put thank together. you. We have a caller on the line. Hello. Hello, good evening, madam. Good evening. Your name and where you're calling from, please. I'm calling from East Legon. My name is Kwame Nagati. Oh, hi, Kwame. Hello. What do you have for us? Yeah. Hello, Kwame. We are listening. Hello. My name is Kwame Nagati. I'm calling from East Legon. Thanks for calling in, Kwame. What do you have for us tonight? Good. I like the program. I like the fact that you are bringing women you are bringing women onto the program most especially young thank you very much Kwamina. and so um, i would also suggest that this program there are other women who are not so well edu educated yeah but they are doing marvelously well out there that people don't know yes and I can also have a suggestion for you, and I'll be glad if those women are also brought onto the program. I like the fact that you are bringing uh, ladies who are very young yes. to encourage our young ones. Yes, this so is actually. That is my thank you very much. This is a platform for women. Here we, we aim at empowering women. Women are our target. So you can email me at Mahalia Bamford at gmail uh, mahiliabamford at gmail.com with any contributions you have and then we'll make sure to take that into consideration as well thank you so much for calling in and thank, thank you. you so much shika we've had an amazing sec section tonight and uh, we're about to have the second segment of the show and so i don't know if you have any parting words for us before we go um so all i can say is let's make sure we keep the cyberspace in ghana hygienic Yes. by not um, giving out or using the internet in the wrong way. Okay. And this will help us so much. That's all I have to all say. All right, thank you so much, Shika. <laughs> We've learned so much and we are going to keep up the good work of educating and entertaining uh, young people. <laughs>